चित्तस्य पदेन वाचा मलम शरीरस्य च वैद्यकेन योपाकरोतम प्रवरम मुनीना पतंजलि प्राजलिराण तो सहना सहनौन सह वीर करवाबह तेजस्वी नवधी तमस्तु मिषाबह ओ शाति 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 सहना सहना सह वीर्यंकह तेजस्वी नवधी तमस्तु मिषा वह ओं शाति 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 सदा शिव सरंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्मदाचार्य पर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा वंदे गुरुपरंपरा यस्यादिम्यम नैकरचरण नाम गोत्र न सूत्र नौ जातिर्न वर्णाभवती पुषो नुपम न स्त्री नकार नाकार न हि जन निमरण नास्ति पुण्यम न पापम नो तत्व तत्वेक साज समरस सद्गुर नमा सद्गुम तम नमा आफर मै नमस्कार सनातन धर्म शंकराचार्य एंड ऑल अवर गुरु and all our guru parampara and uh, i welcome to you all welcome you all to this class today's english session on meditation welcome you all <clears throat> we are uh, looking patanjali ashtanga yoga so in this uh, already five steps uh, first five steps are called bahiranga yoga external controls so these are all internal controls so last three steps are called internal controls internal sadhana antaranga sadhana so dharana dhyana samadhi all three put together it is called as meditation it is not only dhyana is meditation so even dharana dhyana and samadhi all the different stages of meditation so all the three put together is called meditation so the meditation there are several names jainism jain meditation is there zen meditation is there buddhism meditation is there so many names may be there and also our own meditations are there so lot of meditations are there but all the meditation originated from vignana bhairava tantra that is called shiva parvati samvada so parvati is asking the clarification with shiva about all these techniques tantras techniques are called tantras so this tantras 112 tantras are listed in vijnana bhairava tantra and almost all the meditation in the world is taken from this only given different different names for example buddhist meditation anapanasati is there so it is also there in the this meditation only whatever vijnana bhairava tantra in this only it is available so mindful meditation is there 
zero or shunya meditation is there. So many things are there, either Jainism meditations are there. I am going to talk on Zen meditation also. I am also going to talk on Buddhist meditation as well as Jainism meditation in brief. But what I am talking is the six basic principles of meditation. So you can call any name for this. But this is the essence of all the meditations. So in meditation can be called many many names also. The six, but everything is within this six only. So the six techniques are involved. This is the basic 112 meditations also involves this six steps only. So beyond that there is nothing is there. So the Vedanta, it has been synchronized everything. And all are given beautiful names in Vedanta. So the first meditation we said is Chitta Japa. That is Nama Japa. Chitta Japa. So that is na Japa meditation. So that is called Chitta Japa meditation. So that already we have seen the uttering the Nama of the Lord. In all religion it is there with the beads, they are counting the beads, 1, 2, 3, 108 beads are there. So one circle is called as one mala. So they will be doing 10 malas per day, that is 1000 uh, chanting per day. So somebody will be doing 2000, somebody will be 300, something like that they will be doing it. It is the starting point to train the mind not to go this side, that side and uh, to attend on the given work. So that is Nama Japa meditation. It is called Chitta Japa. So second meditation is Chitta has to get relaxed also. So morning to evening we are tensed. So tense the body mind cannot sit for meditation. So it has to be. This is also a type of meditation, but it is a preparatory meditation. All these meditations, what I am talking, the law except the sixth one, that is called the Vedantic meditation. So that is the sixth meditation is the real meditation. Sixth meditation and seventh meditation is called Samadhi. But up to this one, two, three, four, five, whatever I am talking is around preparatory meditation only. Market is only teaching this in the market, outside market corporate world or any of the meditation institutions, yoga institutions, they only teach one, two, three, four, five only, not the sixth one. The sixth one is Vedantic meditation. It is very specific to our Sanatana Dharma. It is nothing to do with any of the other Dharma. All other things will stop somewhere in the five, first five only. So, Unless you learn first five, the sixth meditation you cannot start practicing. You need to practice through Guru only the sixth meditation. So the Guru has to check all the first five meditations whether you have already learned very this one. At least one, one and a half year you have practiced that five steps of the meditation, preparatory meditation. Then you can be eligible for teaching the Vedantic meditation. But I talk about the Vedantic meditation, but I may not be able to give guidance unless you practice the first five things. And Samadhi also I will talk what is Samadhi, what is Samadhi meditation and all. But that is all the fifth, sixth and seventh Vedantic meditation and Samadhi meditation is not possible to teach immediately. You have to practice the first five preparatory meditations in detail and at least one and one and a half year you should be very master, become master of that. Then once you are ready, you can contact. At that point of time, we can start how to do step by step Vedantic meditation and how to do step by step Samadhi and all we can teach, not immediately. The first five meditations is a preparatory meditation. I am going to give all the step by step analysis. What is the science behind that? How to do that also? I am going to teach here. 
and the practical sessions maybe we have to conduct a contact class so there we can correct and guide and all those things that is a project still pending how went to do the this one after finishing the english classes also on meditation and already kannada classes already over both put together one or two batches can be done so both in english kannada together can be done so that is what my thought process is there that's why i have been waiting to complete this after that they are in a residential camp maybe daily three times meditation and also the lecture and the meditation and the guidance can be done three days residential camp if you do that in a holy in a satvik atmosphere and with satvik food so it may be useful to learn the meditation at that point of time anyway that is a future project at the current project is i am now embarking on the five basic what do you say the preparatory meditations i am teaching so first i have already spoken about the japa meditation it is called chitta japa everything is involving the mind so the total thing it is called as upasana upasana is the preparation for the eligibility to get the vedantic jnana upasana has got three steps first step is it is the preparatory meditation is the eligibility to get uh, prepare your mind eligibility jnana yogyata the sense and spirit it is called you become jnana yogyata you are eligible to get the vedantic jnana after making this five step of meditation five basic preparatory meditation practicing your mind is sharp enough to understand capture the vedanta principles and uh, atma jnana what is about atma and how to go and inquire about atma and how to realize atma all those things possibilities only after this five preliminary meditation practiced so that is called jnana yogyata after that you have to contact guru and shastra so the guru and shastra will guide you what is next step so that is called jnana will come jnana yogyata is there now jnana you have to get it from the guru and shastra that is the you have to contact second step is contacting the guru and jnana the third step is called as practicing that jnana it is called nidhyasana meditation so or vedantic meditation so nidhyasana meditation or vedantic meditation will be the ultimate after that it is realization of the atma and realization of the soul all the things that can happen after that enlightenment all these things whatever people call will happen after that only so these are preparatory meditations almost all corporate world almost all youtube almost all everywhere these are the five basic meditation in different names there are thousands of meditation names may be there but everything is basically falls under this five basic meditations the technique involved is only this five so the first is chitta japa second one is chitta vishranti so not only chitta vishranti body also has to get vishranti that is relaxation and chitta also has to get relaxation so we have seen in the last class chitta relaxation meditation chitta vishranti dhyana so chitta japa dhyana first one we have seen second one we have seen chitta vishranti dhyana the relaxation of the mind and body that is the second meditation we have seen now today we are talking about the concentration of the mind so this is called chitta ekagrata dhyana chitta ekagrata dhyana is focusing in how to improve the focusing we can't focus suppose you are 
you are, we ask you to focus any given object only one minute you will focus uh, one one second you will be focusing after that you don't know how to focus for example i show you a flower this is the flower example so i show this is the flower what this flower only one one fraction of a second maybe 30 seconds you will watch the flower after that you don't know what to do what is the meaning of watching so your mind takes a round it goes to either mall your friend place father place mother place wife place or something like that our children our office somewhere it will go colleagues friends and all our america or somewhere it will go and our politics it will go and come back very quickly it will come back but again it will see the flower but you are not concentrating on the flower so the concentration the flower you are seeing only one second or three seconds only you are seeing the flower after that whatever the flower you are seeing is not the real flower you are not seeing your mental image of a flower all the previous judgment everything comes to the your mind and actually you are seeing in front of you flower is there your eyes are seeing but your mental image is forming not of this flower it is comparing all the old flowers new flowers best flowers and all these things and you are though you are talking about flowers but you are not able to focus this flower the focus is such a thing it is very difficult to do so we have to focus the continuously the focus means your mind cannot go this side that side your body cannot shift also like this side that side your body cannot shake your mind cannot shake you should focus there 20 minutes your body cannot shake like that you have to sit so that is called asana siddhi your body back pain is coming and throat is coming higher and this one some itching is coming something you are doing this is all not called focusing the focusing 20 minutes so you are on dot it is a concentration circle is there in a dot board if you put on the dot board the center bull sign you are seeing so you cannot shift that side this side but the people will say i can do the open air open eye concentration you are straining the eye so actually this is the mental concentration not the eye concentration it is not an eye exercise so lot of meditation teacher will teaching will be done on physical focusing like you focus your thumb and like this and then you will shift it to the left end of that and your eye should go and follow that right right also this is called trataka up and down or something like that these are all physical exercises it is only a eye exercise it is not a mental exercise so we have to now we are talking is mental focusing how to mentally focus so other things are that some people will say you have to put a om symbol see only that that is focusing so that is also our eye will get strained no 20 minutes 30 minutes when you see the eye so, uh, the water comes out of the eye and it drips on to your tear this one and all so you again you have to wash you are disturbing your focusing attention or some people will say you see the lamp either put a light a candle and see the lamp flame only the flame due to wind going the side this side uh, then your mind also has to focus that uh, that is also eye focusing only not the mind focusing but these are all called concentration meditation in the market but here our focus is mind focusing not the eye focusing i i is focusing only they teach and they say it is a concentration meditation it is for the exercise for the eye you in order to improve the eyesight in order to nerves of the eyes you have to improve for that only those exercises are there not to the mind so concentration meditation is very importantly the wandering mind has to be brought to halt the wandering happens naturally it is just like a monkey mind we call it as monkey mind in vedanta 
the monkey cannot sit even one minute either it will be scratching jumping or doing something so monkey even fraction of a second it cannot sit idly similarly our mind also cannot sit idly it will either do some work or the other within one second it can go to the whole world one round and come back and sit here only within a minute within a second it will go mano vega we call it as mano vega the light vega is the speed of light is 3 lakh kilometer per second but mano vega is beyond that it is you can't even imagine what speed light speed is less compared to the the mind speed in a mind within second here you go to america and talk to them and come back and all the things will happen you on the whole story would have been happened and you come back still it is 6 o'clock 5 seconds so 6 o'clock you are here this 5 seconds you have done all these stories and come back here the mind has got such a capacity nano second it can do lot of activity it is not even milliseconds so nano seconds also it can do even lesser than that nano second also it can do multiple activities and come back so now the concentration is even that nano second millisecond second and seconds and minutes your mind should not disturb it is not the nanosecond disturbing it is even the second or minute or minutes together your mind should not disturb so there is a famous story in mahabharata after dronacharya gives all the total training for all the people kauravas and pandavas they wanted to test and give the graduation certificate so then uh, this uh, archery first test will be done so every student has been taken to a forest for long a tree was there and there is an artificial bird has been hanged from a tree branch and uh, everybody is asked to hit the eye of the this one bird that artificial bird is there so hit the eye of that so everybody has been called after so many people have not able to concentrate duryodhana has been called duryodhana has been asked by dronacharya so are you able to see the tree he is asking oh i am able to see this tree that tree and all the tree are you able to see the branches so he says i see all the branches so are you able to see the bird yes i can see the bird not only that bird there are lot of other birds also sitting that also i can see so then dronacharya says you have failed you are not able to concentrate then karna comes so many people will come he also get failed finally arjuna has been called arjuna has been asked what are you seeing are you seeing the tree no i am not able to see the tree he says are you seeing the branch no i am not able to see the branch are you able to see the bird no i am not able to see the bird so then what are you seeing i am able to see the eye of the bird so then hit the arrow so it straight away goes to that eye and just bulls eye it hits and fixes the arrow so that is called concentration so we don't know how to concentrate because we give external importance of all the things not the core of that the core of that is concentration so around that everything we will be looking but the core we could not able to concentrate and get more information about the core so all the talkings whatever daily we are doing we are not talking anything to the core the moment we start something there are 100 people will jump into that everybody will talk in their only everything is superficial talk only will happen if somebody want to give that deep depth also they divert the attention nobody is ready to get that deeper knowledge also even in a meeting everywhere it happens the same thing the concentration of the core is not happening so without happening that people cannot succeed 
or the any uh, this one is not happening financially we may succeed but psychologically we may not succeed for that concentration is required concentration is chitta ekagrata just like sunlight is scattered so the sunlight when it is scattered i stand on sunlight it is just warming me but the same sunlight i take a lens i focus and the focused light if it falls on my hand it will burn and make a hole in my hand also such a powerful uh, this one is there including the bone it can burn and it can come out of this and make a hole in the hand also so the earlier also the same rays were there now it is focused it is converged into through the lens and that converged sun rays has got lot of energy similarly mind is scattered like a sun ray it has to be focused when it is focused it can move mountains so that is the possibility of the concentration meditation it can go anywhere and it can do any work that possibility is there so that is called concentration so we have seen relaxation meditation how to body relaxation mind relaxation everything in the last class but vedanta vichara when we want to do even relaxation is not sufficient we have to start concentrating also so that concentration has to happen means all the indriyas or we have five karma indriyas five jnana indriyas are there that has to be brought under control that is why i have made sadhana chatushtaya what is shama what is dama uparama chitiksha everything why we are start is practice on those things has to be done so the concentration meditation means ekagrata there are two types of concentration one is immediate focusing immediate focusing is a short term focusing you want to do certain job in detail so immediately you will focus and forget ultimate focusing is there ultimate focusing is called long term focusing short term focusing is every day we try to do that one same job is given to 10 people so some people will be doing more efficiently some are not doing efficiently because their focusing power is less so more focusing person will do a better job so ultimate focusing is a long term focusing it is nothing to do with the worldly affair it is about what is my ultimate goal of my life dharma artha kama moksha where vedanta says is ultimate goal is moksha in order to go towards moksha we have to focus so all our effort should go towards that that is called long term focusing short term focusing is required the short term focusing is for example the span of attention may be around 5 to 10 minutes 20 minutes like that so if you survey the people what happens in the group of audience when the lecture is going on suppose i make a live lecture example you start attending the live lecture so within 5 minutes what you will do you start absorbing the knowledge and your eye goes to the hall or all come my friends have come or what whether that person has come this person has come and if at all come what type of dress they are having and uh, i want to have to discuss on so many things with that fellow after the class is over i have to catch these are all the mental talk is going on that means your mind is wandering even for the short so in between the talk your mind goes and do this all self talk again somebody has come into the your mind is wandering here and there and in between blackout is happening like our electricity failure happens no our ebs the electricity failures are happening all of a sudden current goes off similarly the blank out in the mind happens it is not continuous the mind is not able to do the continuous 
and if you want to do one hour focusing it's a great capacity so it is not possible in vedanta and all certain principles when it is spoken it will be one hour you should be focusing then only the knowledge can be understood otherwise it's not possible so whatever now we are teaching is only up to the high school level knowledge of vedanta so there are a graduation level vedanta is there master graduation level phd level vedanta is there unless you get ready for that then only the essence of vedanta atma gnana everything will be you may intellectually learn but it has to percolate in you means you need that concentration so the ultimate focus in the short for term focusing itself you have so much problem the ultimating focusing is the goal of ultimate life that is called dharmartha kama moksha chaturvida pala purushartha so ultimate moksha is our goal so to that we should not lose the sight so what they say is chittai grayatu this uh, this one is salakshe samadhanam iti sputam it is says like that salakshe is ultimate goal chitta ekagrata is not losing and samadhanam is your mind should go to samadhi stage to that level you have to go and uh, that is called uh, the long term focusing so the terminology is chittai grayatu salakshe samadhanam iti sputam so that is the sanskrit terminology for concentration it's a continuously has to happen it is not required only in the spiritual field for example let us everybody is knowing the cricket let us take the cricket only so the cricket batsman has to survive within the screens means he requires tremendous concentration there are lakhs or thousands of people in the stadium they are cheering they are making galata and all the things a big field is there there are 11 players umpire and everybody is also there lot of music cheer girls everybody is doing there and lot of commentary and the other things also is there with all those things you have to and the whole world is also watching because of the tv the telecast so everything is in your mind but still you have to concentrate to stay on the crease but not staying is not your goal if you are a batsman you have to score maximum runs in minimum number of balls otherwise 20 20 match in i will stay 20 minutes protecting my crease and also very carefully i will play and i only score 10 runs then the opposite party will win the concentration is you are not staying is not there only is not the concentration stay and you have to also score that means his attention will be long term up to 20 overs is completed he has to stay maybe 3 hours he has to stay 20 20 first 3 and 1/2 hours another 3 and 1/2 hours may happen so you have to do that so opposite party the batsman is doing that opposite party is the fielding people and the bowling people they will try to spoil your concentration they want to distract you the ball they may just throw and he will not throw at all he will say i have not started all the things he may do and some people will stop together two three people in the field they talk and uh, this batsman concentration should get somehow diverted so they put one ball here another ball here and the medium pace come fast pace fast bowler will come spinner will come all the changes the other uh, outside opposite captain will be doing in order to distract otherwise if the two batsmen set uh, they will hit centuries so how quickly we can distract the mind of the two batsmen so is the success of the the opposite team if these two people stick together and run make a run and it is difficult for them to chase and win so they are doing all the possible distractions with intentional distractions also he should be not getting distracted so if you see that much is there 
it is not only mind his body mind everything has to do for example a fast bowler he is bones at 120 km speed so imagine the speed of the ball you don't know whether it is a day match or day and day and night match sir light is not sufficient i cannot see the ball all those things you cannot say because everybody is playing and sir he is bowling very fast i cannot see he cannot say and you have to train your mind eyesight body so you may put the bat here ball may not even come to the ball bat also your bat is here ball may be going somewhere so you have to connect the ball and bat your eyesight it is a fraction of a second you imagine the ball is coming at 120 km speed how much time is available to align your body your bat your eyesight and the length and line and height and the your bat is only having 4 inches so within 4 inches you have to be able to hit it and make a six that is concentration so otherwise everybody cannot become a batsman everybody cannot make a run everybody cannot make a international cricket so millions of people they try out of that they may go to that level and the training will be done also in every day even after becoming 10 years player also every day he has to train himself so even train himself not only to the team and also he himself has to get trained also physical fitness there should be there your seeing capacity and observing capacity connecting capacity everything should be there everything should happen to a this one suppose he stays 3 hours in the crease opening batsman continuously hitting the run all the 3 hours he should have the concentration he cannot distract suppose somebody is talking making fun out of him and he may his my emotion get upset then he cannot concentrate emotionally he cannot get upset he cannot injure himself he cannot leave out of the crease he cannot go back and hit the wicket he cannot hand over a catch so many things are there so he, he the chances of getting out is very high but in spite of all the things he has to calculate concentrate and not to get out that is the concentration that and also he has to score he cannot simply protect the wicket and his man this one it is not also not called this one so such a important thing is that even in an ordinary game of cricket is there so imagine when we our aim is moksha it is not run chasing so the moksha means we are not we don't want to get a rebirth punarapi jananam punarapi maranam should not happen because i am fed up with this birth again fulfilling the life and again death again rebirth again death and all the same lkg to ukg to the master graduation learning and now going to job marriage children and all the same thing every birth i have to do and suffer why i have to suffer i can get liberated so i don't want to get into the rebirth and punarapi jananam punarapi maranam so that should not be there i want to get enlightened i want to get moksha permanently merged with the universal consciousness i don't have rebirth so that is will come from after vedantic meditation and samadhi meditation and then how to go to that enlightenment all the further steps are there so in a solar light a lens will be used to concentrate here our mind we have to use a concentration prism so we have to develop in our mind a concentration prism when you pass on the seven colors of the light the one white light will come otherwise one white light if you put the seven colors will be distinctly taken out and given in the prism the similar way chitta ekagrata says you have to you have to concentrate such a thing so the upanishad says drishyate vagraya buddhya sukshmaya sukshma darshi bihi 
that is what it says so the means is self knowledge in such a way you have to make sharp gained only by the mind agraya means very sharp agra is kushagra mati vika one word is there kusha we call in sanskrit it is in kannada darbe is there so darbe has got a tip is there that is very very pointed very sharp and very small point is there so that type of pointed attention it is called kushagra mati is there so here also the upanishad says agraya is a sharp concentration is required the sharp concentration has to be done at least to start with some 15 to 20 minutes we have to start practice so in the practicing what happens if you keep your mind as it is without focusing your mind so your mind is wandering so you cannot stop the wandering of the mind mind goes wherever it wants whatever the information it want to talk it observe so self talk everything is happening so here vedanta says yeah mind cannot you cannot stop the mind mind will do so the concentration is now your mind is concentrating on various topics various subjects so now you train your mind to one subject only one of the point only one of that sound that is called sajatiya pratyaya pravaha the mind has got a flow of thoughts are there the flow of thoughts are each thought is different thoughts are there now in the concentration your flow of thought is on the same thought it is not on different thoughts so that is called sajatiya pratyaya pravaha in sanskrit it is called so otherwise vijatiya pratyaya pravaha is an automatic i don't need to do mind is doing that so from vijatiya means this thought is so one thought has come this is about my wife so next thought is coming it is about my boss the other thought is coming it is about america another thought is coming is my salary my so like that different thoughts are coming in a given minute second and all so now training the mind to make sajatiya pratyaya pravaha so that means thoughts are concentrated on a given job so what is the concentrate vijatiya pratyaya anantarita sajatiya pratyaya pravaha that is what it happens so what it is saying is initially the mind focuses on vijatiya pratyaya pravaha that means all different different thoughts are coming your mind now getting trained by the methods will be spoken afterwards so the science i am talking the sajatiya means similar thought on the similar thought the first thought is also the same thing second also the same thing third also is thinking about the same because mind you cannot stop don't do any job if you say mind will become mad so instead of doing different job you can request the mind and say do one type of job so that is called sajatiya pratyaya pravaha it has to be done so undistracted by dissimilar thoughts is called concentration undistracted by the dissimilar thoughts is concentration and it is called as ekagrata so ramana mahashi says in his one of his shloka ajya dharaya strota sa samam sarala chintanam virala tatparam so that means in upadesha sara he says is our mind for example if i take one glass of water i have forgot if my height is about 5 feet is there i lift the glass of water and start pouring a thin flow the water it goes up to 1 feet after that the water flow is there after that water breaks into particles and the by the time it reaches the ground the flow is not seen only the particles of water only is seen so this is the mind also when the mind starts pouring it comes as a 
flow. After that, it gets disintegrated like a particles of water and reaches somewhere on the other area. So now what he is telling is, Ajadaraya is means the ghee. For example, if you have melted ghee is there, you start pouring there. It may be a thick stream may be there, but it reaches the ground as a thin stream. A single stream only, in between there is no cut is not there. When the mind is able to do such an activity without any cut in between, if you put a honey, for example, honey, if you take and pour it up to the bottom of the ground, it will not cut at all. It will be going as a single flow, single line flow it is going. Initially, may be thick, but afterwards also, it makes thin, 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 thinnest possible also. It will not cut, but thinnest possible flow also it will maintain. So like that, the mind also, even it may be thin concentration, but it should maintain the concentration. So that is called Ajadaraya Strutasa Samam Sarala Chintanam Virala Tatparam. It is says, so we can do the complex thinking because multiple thinking, multiple thinking, everything is very complex job. It can be done, but Sarala Chintanam is thinking about only one thing is more difficult. So very complex thing we can do easily, simple thing we are not able to do. So, what happens uh, in a Vedanta, what it says, to be happy in life, very simple, Vedanta says. It is not difficult at all. Everybody can be happy, ultimate happy, permanent happiness, everything is possible. But to be happy is very simple. But to be simple is very difficult. So, everyone, we have to be simple. So, because we are complex in our life, that's why we are not able to enjoy our happiness. So, when we become more simpler, very much simple, then happiness automatically comes in. You, you are becoming happiness. So, to become simple is very difficult. Nobody wants to become simple. We don't know. We complex even our food, the dress, and our time, everything, multiple activity, we feel that we are efficient, we want to show. So, but in order to become happy, you need to become simple. So, that is called Sarala Chintanam. It is called Sarala Chintanam has to be done like that. So, there are a lot of methods initially to start with concentrating circles. You can put it on a board and then watch. After that, you can close the eye and you can have that same concentrated circle. Closing the eyes also, you should be able to see that dot. Our own symbol can be there, flame also can be there. But initially, it is all okay. But afterwards, it should be a mental exercise, not the physical exercise. You have to go to Saguna Brahma Vishaya Manasa Vyapara. It is called as from there Saguna Brahma Vishaya Manasa Vyapara. So it is a mental exercise. Manasa Vyapara means it is a mental exercise. The concentration mechanism is called in Vedanta is called Saguna Brahma Vishaya Manasa Vyapara. This is called as concentration meditation. Manasa Vyapara means it is a mental exercise. It is not a high exercise or not. Saguna Brahma is Ishvara. That is, at the, in the beginning, you have an uh, idol is there. For example, Rama, Krishna, or Ishvara, or Vishnu, or Ma, Devi. So many Murtis are there, Ganesha. So that is has attributes. Guna is Saguna means a lot of attributes are there. The face is like this, all these things are there. So that only you are imagining in your mind and then bringing the concentration. That is the initial methodology called Saguna Brahma Vishaya Manasa Vyapara. Later it should become Nirguna Brahma Manasa Vyapara. Nirguna Brahma means without any attributes. So in Bhagavad Gita I have spoken in the 10th chapter and the 11th chapter. 10th chapter is Vibhuti Yoga. 11th chapter I spoke about Vishwarupa Darshana Yoga. 
in vibhuti yoga krishna says whatever you are seeing in the world everything is me only that means if you see an ant it is me only if you see a mountain it is me only it is if you see river if you see ocean if you see elephant ant elephant anything everything is me only that means initially you are seeing your god as ganesha vishnu or something like that that is called eka roopa ishvara from eka roopa he is teaching how to see ishvara in all of these things the even in the mountain even in the ant even in the elephant in everything you are seeing ishvara your mind has to be trained that is called vibhuti yoga the vibhuti yoga talks about that only whatever you name in everything i am it is the i am i am only is there so that means you need not look into only vishnu or ishvara or ganesha or devi everything the whole universe is i am so you have to see whole universe as me so that is the practice you have to do and in 11th adhyaya vishwarupa darshana yoga he says you have seen all from eka roopa to aneka roopa you have seen but still you are seeing the roopa only roopa means is the shape and form only you are seeing now aneka roopa to arupa you have to come arupa is called nirguna brahma so the roopa is called saguna brahma the shape and the color is called as saguna so this is called nirguna there is no this one is there for example if you do puja in your house first two copper vessels will be taken in that water will be filled and they start inviting the gods and goddesses inside that but it is water only vishnu is also called there like everybody is called in that so that means your rupa is not there now the god is not in a arupa it is nothing is there but still you make puja so in the 11th adhyaya vibhu the vishwarupa darshana he says whatever you are seeing everything is in me first he says in vibhuti yoga everything is me only but everything what you are seeing is in me that means i am the only one but all the rupa is merging in me only i myself does not have any rupa so he says arupa so the process of puja will be eka rupa to aneka rupa and to arupa eka rupa to aneka rupa is called saguna brahma manasa vishaya vyapara and after that arupa is no shape no color nothing is there so it is there universal consciousness everything is there so that is called nirguna manasa vyapara. nirguna there is no shape, no color, nothing, no attributes. So, nirguna manasa vishaya vyaparaha nirguna there is no shape no color nothing and no attributes so that is called universal consciousness i am also part of consciousness that means i also don't have atma does not have any shape size color all these things and date of birth date of death nothing is there for this so that is we have to go to that so for that he says the concentration will be start with saguna brahma ishvara vyapara okay you cannot all of a sudden you cannot go to nirguna brahma at least you start your ishta devata and ishta devata murti whatever you can bring into your mind and start making dhyana out of that so ishvara vishaya and his attributes and everything will be taken and then the process is given so now we are talking about saguna ishvara manasa vyapara so for that vedanta describes three steps one is manasa puja another one is called manasa parayana another one is called manasa japam so now you have your ishta devata so you are already making an imagination of the picture of the god inside your mind and on that you are doing manasa puja physical puja everybody does easy because i can put the flowers all the incense sticks and make puja aarti everything you can do and it is physical puja hand is doing your mind may be going somewhere now here concentration meditation 
is talking about manasa puja whatever physically you are doing that's why i have spoken about 16 step of puja shora shopachara puja so in the vedanta in the introduction to vedanta i said so on the 16 step of puja see your mind is not going anywhere now so you are going on a sajatiya vishaya pravaha like minded thoughts only is coming sin continuously for that this is the first step manasa puja all the 16 steps of the puja you are doing puja the only one topic is there so one topic only continuously the same thoughts are coming nothing other thoughts are entertained the moment you start doing mentally puja so mentally you may be calling the god ask him to sit on the altar so whatever your pita is there give the pita and then uh, give water and make snana and make uh, all the kumkuma ganda and everything and then put off of flowers akshata and also offer your panchamrutha abhisheka everything mentally you can do no so it is possible physically you don't need all the people should help you mentally when you start doing your mind cannot wander that side this side it comes to sajatiya vishaya pravaha saguna brahma vishaya vyapara that means you are talking you are given the mind work of what saguna brahma your ishta devata and what is the vyapara is the puja what is the puja manasika puja in the manasika puja when you do 16 step of puja and finally take the aarti and also make your blessings puja so it will take 20 minutes if you start doing it then your mind 20 minutes manasika puja physical puja you may not get so much relaxed your mind would are not concentrated with this manasika puja it will get concentration will happen manasa parayana is there manasika puja i have explained you the second is called the manasika manasa manasa parayana manasa parayana is there parayana is most of us we have at least one or two shlokas or some people may have vishnu sahasra nama lalita sahasra nama all those things are there so everybody knows how to chant loudly but here that loudly chanting cannot concentrate your mind this is the second best manasa vyapara he is talking is manasa parayana manasa parayana for example you know vishnu sahasra nama or maybe a small hanuman chalisa is there or anything is there so only small shloka is there again repeatedly you can talk about that shloka only possible so what you have to do it may be in any language it is not necessary in sanskrit only kannada telugu or your own mother tongue anything can be done manasa puja also can be done in your own language not necessarily the sanskrit word should come or anything that so now we are into second variety of concentration the second variety of concentration is called as manasa parayana manasa parayana here for example we will take vishnu sahasra nama om vishwam vishwas uh, when you start doing it it runs in the background of the mind but you are physically uttering your mind is not there at all your body is only talking about the chanting of the mantra but now without chanting loudly when you start manasika in the mental if you are doing it becomes very very highest concentration it becomes manasa japam it is manasa parayana manasa parayana means the chanting is done within your own mind so that means it needs more concentration when the mind is associated with the chanting inside the mind then your mind comes to concentration that is another methodology second method the third first one is manasa puja second one is manasa parayana the third one is called manasa japa so in the manasa japa we need not have the all the thousand names of vishnu sahasranama lalita sahasranama are a long uh, mantra 
or Gayatri Mantra, so many things are not required. A small Om Namah Shivaya, maybe there, Rama is there. So your Ishtadevata, only one name may be there. Very short, this one is there. So Om Ganesha Namaha may be there, Om Namo Narayanaya, maybe many things may be there. So it's a short mantra, it is not a long mantra. This should be repeated. It is continuously, it is called Aurutti. So continuous Aurutti has to happen. That means repetition has to, Shabda Aurutti has to happen. Shabda means word, Aurutti means repetition. Shabda Aurutti should happen. So here also there are three methodologies are there in order to do that. So he says, Again, Ramana Mahashi says, Chitta, jap, chitta Jam Japa Dhyana Muttamam, he says. So mentally repetition, not verbally repetition outside. Though the mantra is small, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, if you are listening yourself also, the higher you are hearing, and others also able to hear, like that also you can do. Even only your vocal cords and say, Om Namah Shivaya, but what sound is not coming, your lips may be going and uh, vocal cord may be vibrating, but uh, nobody else is hearing. That is also second type of Japa comes. That last one is only in the mind you are talking about Om Namah Shivaya. So you yeah, repeatedly, without any break, you are continuously repeating. So that is the highest level concentration brings you. So that is called Chitta Japa. Chitta Jam Japa Dhyanam Uttamam, he says. So, in this Chitta Jam Japa is very important. So, what are the three methodologies are there in making Japa? Is One is called Vachika Japa. It is called as Ucha Japa also. That means loudly chanting. You are also able to hear your voice. Others also can hear the voice. So, that is called Ucha Japa or Vachika Japa. So in that a lot of uh, your strain will happen, your vocal cord will get strained, your, uh, uh, this one your saliva will be formed, you have to again and again swallow the saliva, everything has to happen. If you don't want to get saliva, you have to take the tongue and touch to the upper palate and then close the lips slowly and then start mental japa. Throughout the japa you are not getting saliva formed at all. So if the tongue is below, tuck here, then the lot of saliva will come. Once in a while, you have to swallow the saliva. Otherwise, it will fall out of your mouth. All those things can happen. So these are all signs involved. So the signs also we have to adopt and do. So the Vachika Japa is the loud Japa. It is third grade Japa. But in the concentration, it is all the three is okay. But if you are not able to do the the first type of Japa, at least third type also, you can do Vachika Japa, you can do 20 minutes Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya. You have to continuously do. The science behind this is, when the mind is concentrating on the Om Namah Shivaya sound, and you have to bring your mind also to that sound. You should not allow the mind somewhere go and only the tongue will be talking Om Namah Shivaya. Mind and the sound should be mixed together, then your mind will stay here continuously. So while doing that, what happens between Om Namah Shivaya and the second Om Namah Shivaya when you are talking, there is a silence is going to come. So there is a first Om Namah Shivaya, second Om Namah Shivaya, the silence is coming. Initially, the silence is small, maybe a fraction of a second may be there. As and when you practice, the silence will increase. Om Namah Shivaya will be less. So you are enjoying the silence. That is meditation. That silence will be, you are knowing that silence. You are understanding the silence. You are floating in that silence. That happens by practice. So that is called concentration meditation. That is the science of meditation. So orally you are talking, it is a Ucha Japa. There is another called Japa, it is called Manda Japa or Upamsha Japa, it is another name, it is called Upamsha Japa. There, your lip is only murmuring like that. It is not making sound. Your vocal cord also making Om Namah Shivaya, but its sound is not coming. Lips also is moving, but 
no sound is coming. That is called Upamsha Japa. It is Manda Japa. Ucha Japa or Vachika Japa, Manda Japa or Upamsha Japa is the second type of Japa. <laughs> All the things having a lot of signs is there in that. The third one is called Manasika Japa. In the Manasika Japa, your lips is also not moving. Your vocal cord is also not moving. Your tongue is also not moving. But still you are telling Om Namah Shivaya in your mind. That is the highest concentration. So you are not even moving the mala. It is mala japa. You are not doing, you are not doing, you are either counting nothing, you are doing it. But Om Namah Shivaya, your own Easter Devata, not necessarily. Hanuman, Chalisa, Hanuman number, we can be there or any Devi may be there. Any one name may be required. Rama may be there or anything. It is given by the Guru. So that Nama, you will become your name, this one. So you start chanting. Then what happens? Continuity of the mind will be continuously there. It is nothing to do with any religion. Any religion, they may have their own mantra or only one name that can be chanted. It is all religion can be done. It is not necessarily Sanatana Dharma, Hindu or nothing is there. All people can do this Manasa Japa. So Manasa Japa is not new to us. For example, you want to buy a car. So your mind always thought about continuously car, 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 car. And if you have already made a Mercedes Benz car, means okay, Mercedes Benz car, Mercedes Benz car. Unknowingly, your mind is already doing Japa. So that's why the Japa realization will happen. You will get soon the car is in front of you. Similarly, when you do the Manasika Japa, the Ishtartha Siddhi Rastu, whatever you are wanted, will come in front of you also. In a physical form also can come or even Arupa without anything also it can come. That is the power of that. So Japa means Parayana is also Shabda, but Japa is here, you are only talking about Japa. Only you are talking about Om Namah Shivaya. The attributes of Shiva, when you are bringing in Shiva is like this, Shiva's character and Shiva's power and everything, when you imagine, your mind is not going anywhere. There is not going into different other world. It is coming into one Sajatiya, repeatedly connected the thought flows will come. So that is called concentration. Repeated connected thought flows. Unconnected thought flows is not a meditation. It is not concentration. Our mind is daily doing it. So repeated connected thoughts flow has to happen. So that is called Japam. So when we do that continuously, we are going to achieve a silence, such a silence. Mind also becomes silent at that point of time. But initially it may not be, maybe after three months, six months, when you sit for meditation, your mind totally still, it will come and become focused. And uh, you are able to do anything at that. And uh, that 20 minutes will give you the another 24 hours, lot of power to you. Lot of concentration can happen. Lot of success can happen even in the physical world. And also it will take you to the ultimate Brahma Jnana, Atma Jnana, and moksha towards that also it will take. So we have seen manasa puja, manasa japa, manasa parayana, manasa japa. These are all the three methodologies to concentrate. It is nothing to do with any religion. Any religion people can do. Everybody can possible to do that. So all these three things put together, it is a concentration. This one is there. Sir, all the three can I do? Yeah, if you are able to do all the three, you can do at least 20 minutes when you want to do. First, sir, I am very good at making puja. Okay, you do elaborate puja in your mind, manasa puja. Maybe out of 20 minutes, 18 minutes, 18 minutes you make puja. One minute you make manasa parayana. One minute manasa japa you do. That is sufficient. So that is also a type of meditation. Sir, I don't know about puja. I can only know Vishnu Sahasranama, Sarita Sahasranama. Can I do that? Okay. One minute you make Manasa Puja. Another 18 minutes you make Manasa Parayana. So after that, 
one minute last one minute again you do manasa japa so that is the way you can do i don't know even making parayana also i don't know puja also i don't know i can only know only one god name so i can do that means okay you do first one minute manasa puja after one minute you make manasa parayana after that you can make 18 minutes manasa japa so that the combination of all the three is also possible one is also possible you need not get confusion about how to do and all those things it is you have to put your effort but without putting the effort you will not know the nitty gritty of that what is happening in that and all you will get the benefit without this one anayasa without any of your struggle you will get into that stage dwelling place inside your mind it will happen so <clears throat> this is called concentration meditation but all other market what they are teaching you focus on the lamp or focus on the uh, concentric circle or something a picture all these things is initially okay but here this is the highest level meditation vedanta teaches about this not the external meditation so don't get confused sir outside i have gone for meditation practice they have taught they have given me say beautiful home symbol or beautiful concentric circles and how much colorful is there so much is there if i start doing i can get concentration and all these are all you are straining your eyes so you have to look into that so better to do all this is the higher level concentration techniques all the higher level concentration techniques only i have taught all the preliminary level market is taking you 5000 10000 and they do that so other methodology is also called as in concentration visualization techniques are there in the visualization techniques also we can concentrate on the chakras we are having seven chakras are there so in the bottom of the spinal cord between the hips starting point of that so we have 33 joints are there so the 33 joints around that one spinal cord is going so in that spinal cord is a physical nerve is there so but our chakras are there is one is ida another one is pingala this two this one is there the air is going that is prana shakti is going ida and pingala so ida and pingala is circling like this like a uh, snakes it is circling like that when that circling happens when two joints are happening there at that one point on the spinal cord around there is a nadi comes into contact that is called uh, sushumna nadi is coming from there to the tip of the nose it is coming one nadi so that is other nadi is also coming there but it is circling when a sushumna nadi directly comes here so when it comes here so it circles around that ida pingala when two things join at one place that place one chakra is there that chakra will be energy centers of our body totally so we have 114 chakras are there in that seven major chakras are there on the seven major chakras we can do the meditation also the bottom chakra is called as muladhara chakra above that below the navel part ka button it is called as swadhisthana the other in that it is called manipura so these are on the lower level chakras so all the people we are living in the lower level chakra only so all our energy is consumed only to fulfilling that physical need food shelter sex and all those things only we cannot intellectually evolve and not intellect intelligently you can evolve even in the navel cord and below also but if you intellectually you want to evolve your energy has to be pushed up so the next chakra is called anahata at this heart level it is there after that it is in the kanta it is called as vishuddha level and it is in the agna chakra here it is there and sahasrara at the top of the head is there 
So these are all the seven chakras. You can focus. Chakra theory itself is very high. How the chakra looks like and all the things and all can be taught at some other time. So the chakra meditation is also good for concentration meditation. If you are not able to do Manasika Japa, Manasika Parayana, chakra meditation is also recommended. So that is also another possibilities are there. But you are not supposed to do Kundalini on this one and all. Jagrata, I get energy. So I can do witchcraft, magic, all those things and pavada. All those things are not required to become Atma, a moksha, not required all those things. But only simple concentration on the chakras also is required. Your sharpness will improve and your capacities will improve and you are able to concentrate without any distraction. That is also possible. I have already told you about the physical concentration of all the either lamp or ohm symbol or the concentric circles or so many any other object or any idol or something like that. That is a physical concentration. Mentally, I have told you there are three varieties. One is Manasika Puja, Manasa Puja, Manasika Parayana and Manasika Japa. So these three is there. Another one is you are looking into chakra meditation. The chakra meditation also is good. So you have to do this and that is the highest concentration it will happen. You have to sit relaxed and you have to start for example all the things. So these are all the certain things are very constant. You have to sit in a calm and good place. Desha, Kala and all I explained, preliminary requirements for sit to sit meditation. All these things you practice, sit on a insulated thing, back erect, spine erect, head erect, on the string in straight line, crossed legs, crossed hands, keeping your hands on the thigh or on the in between the thigh. So like that, neck is like that, eyes gently closed, lips gently closed. And uh, your uh, attention on the air yeah, breathing also should be normal. And then you start making japa, manasika japa also. That is what it has to happen. Om Namo Narayanaya or Om Namo Shivaya or so many things can be. Whatever your God has been given, it has to be done continuously for 20 minutes mentally. So that is called concentration meditation. With this you are going to get concentration. And uh, this is the science and technology of the meditation. Anything is okay. With this, I am going to conclude on the concentration meditation topic. So we will see next is uh, expansion meditation. So the next class will be expansion meditation. What is the science and technology and how to do that also I will say. So with this and uh, practically when I am teaching a contact class or a some one of the three day residential program, I will show you how to do that also, how to sit and do on the Mahasikha Japa and also teach you, guide you also possible. Thank you. Om Sarve Bhavanta Sukhinaha Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Ma Kaschid Dukkha Bhagbhavet Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Pyo Namaha Hari Om